step back a little bit, I would suggest there's two things that we need to be focusing on and trying to do among all of us specifically. The first one is we've got to find a way to find common ground with one another. Now that's a big difference than compromising your principles. I'm one of those people who don't believe you should compromise your principles. I've helped people all the time say, shouldn't you have more compromise? I don't know. I, I, I don't believe, I've never asked a friend of mine to compromise his principles because if he'll compromise his principles in one area, he'll compromise them in another area. But what we need to focus on is how we can find common ground to find the solutions we need to move the country forward. And then the second thing is, we have to have some analysis, some of those facts that we bring to the table and say, forget all the spin. What's the true analysis that drives us forward? I want to start with the common ground. And I want to start with what Brenda said. You know, I don't think we're going to see this magically happening in Washington tomorrow. And everybody will say, how come we can't have Washington so polarized? Well, the reason Washington's so polarized is because the country is so polarized. I mean, just look at the last uh, cycle that we've had in the election. We have probably, if you add up all the campaign dollars, if you add up all the media dollars that you have had spent in the last year or so, we are probably approaching two and a half to three billion dollars that's been spent not bringing people together but separating people and dividing people. We look at the things that used to unite us, and we don't see them anymore. Something as simple as teaching history. Look at the curriculums of most of our higher education, uh, most of our colleges and universities, and we don't even teach a history that unites us and pulls us together. And we see group after group from other parts of the world that love to see the United States divided. Now, we can sit here and wring our hands and say, oh my gosh, I wish that wasn't the case. Or we can say, how can we push through that? and find the common areas that we can agree on and move the nation forward. And we, we can do it. I, we can do it. We've done it here in Chesterfield County. Whether you're talking about creating an industrial um, capacity, whether you're talking about medical exchange, whether you're looking at Fort Lee. I mean, remember just a decade ago, Fort Lee was on the chopping block getting ready to go, and this community and all the surrounding communities, we all came together. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. One of the things we don't want to do is lose Fort Lee. Today, Fort Lee is about one-seventh of the economy of this whole area here, and it's probably the most forward-looking facility in the United States military today. The Defense Supply Center, remember that was on the chopping block. It's actually had growth of about 20% over the last several years after Brad. Look at General Dynamics. They want to cut those jobs out because they didn't want to have open bidding anymore. They wanted to have sole source bidding so that they could put the jobs anywhere they want. Everybody came together and said, how do we focus and how do we change that? And it can happen in Washington, too. Uh, one of my best friends in Washington is a guy by the name of Mike McIntyre. I happen to be a Republican from Virginia. Mike is a Democrat from North Carolina. We work together on religious freedom, religious liberty issues. In the last campaign cycle, the only situation in the United States of a Democrat inviting a Republican to his district or a Republican inviting a Democrat during campaign time was Mike McIntyre asked me to come to his district to speak about those issues because he told everybody in the audience, he said, these aren't Republican, these aren't Democratic issues. This guy I love, he loves me, we go before it, nobody's going to find us attacking each other because we're looking for common ground to defend and protect religious liberty and religious freedom. But it wasn't just religious freedom and religious liberty. Uh, Congressman Lipinski, another Democrat, came together and we looked at, him, said, Look at what we're doing with all this argument about health care, but we're not moving the curve. Suppose we did this. Suppose in doing all the bailouts that we did, suppose instead of doing that, we took just $25 billion, we sent it to the National Institute of Health, and we said, don't politicize the research that you do. For one time, put a chair in the middle of the room and say, we want the research to go where it's going to have the most near-term clinical benefit for a patient. And then we said this, we want you to focus on three illnesses. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and diabetes. All the researchers told us if we had been successful, we wouldn't have cured those illnesses, but we would have bumped the, the symptoms out two years. If you just delayed the symptoms on one of those illnesses two years, we would have changed the cost curve of health care in this country like nothing we've seen in decades. And then on defense cuts that we've got, I traveled to Illinois. They asked me to come and speak at one of the armories there on defense cuts. I'm in the room. I look up, and here comes a guy named Dave Lobsack. Dave's, Dave's a Democrat from Iowa, very liberal Democrat. He walks in. I had no idea what he was going to say. I'm sitting, you know, pretty much like I'm doing right now. Dave, I'm sitting by the table. When I sit down, he got up, and he said this. He said, I drove from Iowa today because I heard he was going to be here speaking. 
He is one of the most bipartisan chairmen in the United States Congress, and everything <coughs> he's saying about defense cuts is right. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican. I drove here tonight to tell you we better change these things and turn around. So it can happen if we get through all the hype and all the spin and say, not compromising the principles, but how do we work to find common ground to move the nation forward? 